do I? Hello? It should be on. Testing, testing. Uh, what do I? Huh. Hello. My name is Freya. I am 16 years old and I just totally fucked up a guy that tried to rob me and I took his recorder. Not gonna lie, he properly scared me. I was just coming back from a hunt and was deciding how to cook my rabbit when suddenly there was a guy invading my shelter and going through my stuff. I didn't do the smartest thing ever. I just took my knife out and went after him. Luckily, he was just as surprised as I was, so I managed to stab him in the shoulder. Okay, he wasn't that surprised. I was aiming for the back and he saw me. Long story short, I am bleeding from like five different wounds. My whole face hurts, but he's the one who kissed the ground after I hit him with a big ass stone to his face. During our fight, this recorder fell out of his backpack and that really threw him off. It seemed like he was considering whether he should save their quarter or his life. After he lost consciousness, I packed my shit as fast as I could and I took his stupid little machine. He also had some cassettes in his backpack and, and a chocolate bar. <laughs> Score. That's for robbing a person's shelter, you asshole. I hope losing his treasured possessions will hurt him just as much as it hurt me when the fucking asshole grabbed my hair and smashed my head into the ground. <sighs> anyway, I have a tape recorder, a sugar rush, <laughs> and nowhere to stay since I had to run away. Now I'm hiding in a car for the night. Maybe I'll listen to what's on the cassettes and try to stem my bleeding. That guy was such an asshole. I can't speak properly and my face is on fire. The good news is I stopped all the bleeding. The bad news is that I think I left my lighter there. So I lost my source of fire and my sweet, sweet disco style. <laughs> and where's Loki? Yavla, I must have lost my troll as well. Oh! I listened to some of the cassettes. If that guy, his name was Adam, didn't beat me like a dog, I wouldn't have thought that he would be such a dick. Okay, it's clear that he's trying to sound like the toughest dude that ever lived, but there's this cassette in which he sings to some girl called Helga. It's so lame. Anyway, I moved into an old van. Its small red windows had these red and white checkered curtains, and the back door can be closed and open from the inside, so it's great for hiding in. Only hiding, though, not for living. Man, I was in that shelter for almost a year. I think... I should have killed that guy. Now if I'd gone back there, I wouldn't have been able to sleep, fearing he would come back. I guess I should brush up on my survival skills now that I have no semi cozy bed to sleep on and a creaking back door. Good thing I still have that book. I woke up with a slight fever. My face is relatively okay. Well, I caught a glimpse of myself in the rear view mirror of the car, and it still looks like a half eaten plum, but uh, that means it's tasty, right? <laughs> Ouch. Okay. Laughing still hurts. Anyway, as I was saying, I woke up with a fever. It seems like one of the wounds doesn't feel so happy. I washed it. I tried to keep it dry and clean. This is the only book I have. I'm not good with letters. I mean, I can read, 
but sometimes the letters seem messed up to me and I need to focus hard and, well, it's not the most pleasurable activity. Anywho, this book, it's about Vikings. I really like it. I wish they were still around. <laughs> There's a ton of useless info and a lot of things about the religion, which is kind of fun. But damn, there's some useful stuff as well. Like how to make a sun compass. I actually use that, like, twice. You just need a big stick, a couple of small ones, and in time, you can tell which direction is east. I bet they would survive living in this world. There's also a whole chapter on what they wore to keep warm. I mean, I can't knit socks or wear a cloak. The clothes nowadays are different. But it reminded me of what my mom always said. There's no bad weather, only bad clothing. Well, Mom, I guess you had no idea that this saying would be twice as true and twice as useless post-apocalypse. Sure, I wouldn't be frozen as a popsicle if I had a better park app, but I can no longer walk into a shop and just buy one. The stores are empty now. The most useful tip, and I mean really useful, was how to make ice skates and what they were used for. I never thought of it as fun before, but now? First, it's really fun, and second, I can move faster and easier on skates. Although, I really need to be careful. It may be effective and fast, but it's also kind of loud, and I'm easily spotted. Anyway, to make the skates, Viking used shin bones of deer or oxen, or a flat piece of iron. I tried using lots of different things, but the bones work like a charm. Hmm. Here's how many things Viking women could do in comparison to European women. Oh, wow. So many rights. I think the post-apocalypse is more liberating. I can do anything. Well, I mean, I have to do everything. <laughs> Back in the van for tonight, unfortunately. For a few days, I've been scouting out this area, but I can't risk moving a lot right now. I, I don't know this area, and I still need to heal. Today was really weird. I found the perfect place to hide. I mean, almost perfect. There was this small opening in the rock, just big enough for a person, even a larger man, to be able to fit through it if they crouched. I was thinking that if it was the entrance to a cave, it would be a really nice place to avoid snowfall and the annoying wind. So I crouched and went in. It was a cave, and inside there was almost a sun. In the middle was a portable stove on a gas tank. On the right, a bunch of trash, open cans, various food packaging and bottles. At the far end of the cave, there was an improvised sleeping place with an old mat and very few thin and dirty blankets. There were spruce branches all over the place and on the walls there were drawings. Only simple ones, done with chalk. Mostly of leaves, flowers and ornaments. But this place was... Hygelig. Finally, on the right. There was a person, a woman. I couldn't see her face at first. I was scared initially. She looked like she was sleeping, leaning into the cave wall with her back turned towards me. But when I moved closer, talking to her, I noticed the light covering of dust on her body. When I approached her, I saw her face. I've seen my fair share of dead people, but I could tell she's been here for some time, yet her face was basically intact. Sure, her skin was mottled shapes of orange and ash and black, but she looked so peaceful. 
Also, the kid had a stale aroma, but there was no stench. Maybe it was the bone chilling cold and dryness of this place that helped preserve her like that. I couldn't even tell why she died. Maybe she just gave up. I looked briefly through the trash on the ground to see if there was any food. And even though her hat was something I'd really appreciate wearing in the following weeks, I left her there. Alone. Sleeping. Forever. I overheard a really odd conversation today. I felt like I was in a movie or something. I was returning from fishing when I found this little shed that had a small storage place under its roof. It was a good hiding spot, and since I felt cold and tired, I climbed in and hid behind the bale of straw and fell asleep. I haven't seen anyone in days or weeks, and I didn't expect to, but I awoke to the sound of voices. They belonged to a couple of dudes in scary military gear, sitting just down below, sheltering from the snow that had started to fall. From what I could gather, they were both from the same group called ARC. They talked about how they were trying to essentially save the world and re-establish society. One of them seemed to be a new member. That was kind of lucky as the other guy was explaining a lot to him. Meaning, I overheard a lot in detail. I heard a few interesting things. First, these guys were also a part of something called Wrath and worked for some scientist or something. <laughs> I mean, wanting to save the world and calling yourself Wrath. I didn't feel like jumping down and expecting they'd help and provide them with shelter. Even they didn't seem so sure about the whole deal. They were talking about some woman, referring only to this person as her, like it was obvious who they were talking about. She sounded scary. Wonder who she is. They also said something about supplies being dropped from a plane to help survivors. <laughs> yep, I can imagine the bloodbath around those airdrops. The most interesting thing they were talking about was in regard to the church of Surtur. At first, I thought he literally meant the church in Fjellkampen, but they mean people. In a mocking tone, the guy said that they were playing Vikings. But what they meant was that there is supposedly a group trying to live the old way instead of clutching at the remains of modern civilization. That sounds so good. I have to find these people. If only I knew where to start. Maybe actually, at Fjellkampen. I arrived at Fjellkampen. I passed the plenary, so I know I am close to the church. But it was getting dark, so I had to find a place to get my beauty slip. <laughs> I'm scared in the dark, okay? <sighs> Speaking of scared, I encountered a few people on my way here. Even heard the plane. It's like a fucking city center here. And just like in a city center, I tried to avoid everyone. <laughs> yeah, sure. Very Viking of me, sneaking around like a scared kid. Well, guess what? Even though I've actually slipped some throats, I am a scared kid. Actually, it is Viking-like to sneak around. First, before they raided and plundered, they needed knowledge of the land. Who gained that? Scouts. So I am a scout. I know these areas like the back of my hand. Second, I read that surprise assaults and underhand fighting techniques were okay in the Viking book. They believe in winning at any cost. Take that fake horn helmet wearing Viking fans. <laughs> this was all in like one paragraph of the book. The rest of it is about the strength of their unity. They lived together, they sailed together, and they fought together alongside their close friends. I don't have that. I can't be a fearless warrior fueled by a sense of brotherhood. I wish I could, I really do. Actually, now I remember murder was classified differently to killing. They understood murder as the unexpected ending of someone's life, 
and thought it worthy of a greater punishment. So, in the end, stealth may be an unmanly way to kill. Good thing I am a woman. At least I won't hurl myself into a fight. I have zero chance of winning just to prove a point. I went to the church. I only expected to find broken benches, burned out candles, and probably heaps of trash. But as I entered the church, the sun was rising, and warm morning rays of sunshine shone through the small windows. As plain as the church actually is, this was a marvelous sight. Where the light shone through the small round window on the far right was a man, praying. He was kneeling in front of the altar, I was standing nearby, at the opposite side of the once red carpet. Struck by this peaceful scene, I forgot my instinct to hide, and I said, Good morning. <laughs> the man slowly turned his head, stunned at first by my presence. Then he smiled and said, And you too. The man then turned to his prayer. I slowly approached him and sat on the nearest bench, watching him. As he finished, he stood up sat next to me and smiled. I don't remember the last time someone smiled at me. He had such kind eyes. I asked him if he is a Christian. He replied that the new religion did not help our world much, that he was praying to Saul today and it worked. I asked him, full of expectations, if he belonged to the church of Surtur. He did not, but he knew about them. He said that from time to time, people stopped at this church, talking about them, searching for them. And some of these people knew where to find them. Then he told me all the places that these people thought of the church of Surtur might be. None of them were the same, but all of them were further south. So that's where I'll go. When the man heard that this was my plan, he reached into his pocket and gave me a very old coin. He explained that he got them from a museum where he used to work in the old days and that he couldn't bear seeing people stealing them for their own selfish reasons. He said that he gave these coins to other travelers as a good luck charm. It had some guy's face on one side and a cross or more like a plus sign on the other. As I was leaving, we shook hands. Only after I left, I realized we didn't exchange names. Actually, we didn't say who we were at all. I guess it doesn't matter in this world. What matters is that I know which direction to go in. I have a long way ahead of me. I have to be strong. That is the essence of what it means to be a true Viking. Determined, strong-willed, fierce. I've stopped counting how long it has been since I had to leave my shelter. There's been many occasions when I've thought about returning, as it was the perfect place. It wasn't near anywhere people would go for supplies. Yes, it was lonely, but there was water, and in that water, there were fish. There were also some old jars of pickled food in the basement. I could go back to get those. I might have to. But I'm far away now. It's been harder and harder to get food. I don't have much luck with fishing. Basements, pantries, kitchens, they're all there. Empty boxes, warm refrigerators, broken jars. Reading about the food Vikings eat makes my stomach growl. I was hoping to find some useful advice other than fishing. There was a sentence which explained that they relied on farming, and if there was a poor harvest, they might starve during long winters. <laughs> what a prospect for the future, for fuck's sake. This is a long winter, and I have nothing to harvest. Oh man, look at this. There's actually a recipe. Beans, onions, apples, sour cream, thyme, mustard, seed, garlic, salt, butter. Fuck. Well, I think I could get some salt. 
by the way, if anyone is listening to this while I fucking die of starvation, donut lids, they taste like shit. I've been on the road for some time now. I stay away from high-risk places as much as I can. But that means I haven't seen a living soul in such a long time. I never thought this would be the worst issue. I'm capable of getting water, even food. I've always managed to find a warm place to sleep and keep myself entertained, but... I've been listening to the tips I took from Adam before falling asleep. They comfort me. I also enjoy recording, as sometimes I feel like I don't even know what my voice sounds like anymore. I used to walk around singing aloud, but these days it's better to stay quiet. My jaw still hurts in the mornings, and I lost a tooth when Adam smashed my face against the ground, but I've been listening to his voice for so long that I think of him as my friend. How fucked up is that? <laughs> Sometimes I pick up telephones just to remind myself what it was like when I was about to chat with my friends. <laughs> it's just silence at the other end. Now the only moments that remind me of human interactions are either listening to the cassettes or seeing dead people. Yeah, sometimes I think about how the dead mostly look peaceful or content. Those who live, although I miss them so much, have little humanity left in them. Sometimes I envy the dead. They don't struggle for survival anymore. <laughs> Wake up, try to kill something to eat and try not to get killed. What is the point though? I am so lonely that I see faces in everything. That's definitely not normal. I miss fighting with my mom. I found them. I've been traveling mostly through mountains so I can see as far into the distance as possible. And I think I found them. There's noticeable signs of human activity in these parts. And I'm in recent activity. Fireplaces. Partially visible footsteps along tracks, broken arrows and bloodstains, hopefully from animals. People were patrolling and hunting here. Then, just before dawn, I saw it. An old village in the distance that had several pillars of smoke billowing from it. I plan to approach them slowly, and maybe with my hands raised so they see and do no harm. Perhaps I could show them my coin. A talisman maybe some of them will recognize. I am both scared and excited. I really hope I found my new home. I don't want to be on my own anymore. Wish me luck. Well, since I'm just talking to myself, I wish me luck. I really do. I hope they won't kill me on sight. I'm going in. Bye.